Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about a binding machine. It sounds slightly daunting, but it's really easy to use, I promise. If you're new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to show you things like a binding machine, <laughs> or to give you different ideas for curriculum, ways to organize, just to provide you with this resource that gives you options for your homeschooling experience and hopefully makes it better. If there's things you would like me to cover or ideas that you have for me, that would be great. I love new ideas and you can give me ideas for my videos too. That would be awesome. So if you just comment below what your thoughts are, I will be happy to look over those. So binding machines is something I've just recently started doing. I used to have my husband just take them to the university or go find, uh, I don't even know what the stores are called <laughs> where you can go get them done. But, um, that it was, I don't know if it was more expensive. It was kind of a pain for him to have to do it. And I would just send him with a big pile of papers and books and stuff and tell him to go get it done. And so I looked into getting a binding machine and this was one that came recommended, I think actually from the Moffat girls, I'll put their link below. I really love, love their resources. and I'm going to be binding some of them today. So this one is 65 ish dollars on Amazon. I'll put a link below. And so it's on the cheaper end, but it still works well. And so I'm going to show you. So we have the machine. You also need the coils. These ones, aren't my favorite, but that's what this machine uses. I like the spiral ones better because some of the times these ones come undone. But when it, most of the stuff I'm binding is stuff my kids are just using for a few months or for the school year. So I don't really care if it falls apart by the end of the year because we usually don't keep it. So I have two different sizes here. This is a half inch and these are three quarter inch. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about those in a minute. So I also got those off of Amazon and I think a box of a hundred of the half inch is like $10 and it's, I still have a ton of them. So it'll last you a really, really long time. And then <laughs> you can't see them cause they're clear, but I like these uh, covers. You don't have to get them, but it makes it look nicer. I feel like, and I feel like it also makes it last longer. So it's up to you. These are also on Amazon. I'll put a link below and I just put these on the front of whatever I'm binding. And we're gonna have a kid screaming interruption. So just give me one second. Sorry about that. I had to go handle the kid problem. I don't think I talked about these. <laughs> If I did, you get it twice. No. Um, so I just buy black cardstock to go on the back. You, they do have special backing you can buy. It is more expensive. And so I just bought a huge ream of black cardstock on Amazon for pretty cheap. I'll find, see if I can find what one I bought and link it below. And so this is what I use for the back. Again, you don't have to have a back and you don't have to have a front, but I feel it helps it look nicer and also, which is important to me, and also hold up better as the kids are flipping through it and pulling pages or whatever. At least the back and the front kind of keep everything together. So today we're gonna be binding some summer work packets. Like I said, these are from the Moffat Girls and I really love her stuff, I use a lot of it. And so in my blog, I'll explain more about these and go through them and I'm also going to just have a brief video about our summer kind of routine and what we're doing first like to keep up on school and avoid the summer slide so this is what we're going to be binding today so i'm going to try to find the best way to show you this while doing it <laughs> so let's work on okay hopefully this is a good angle it's a struggle for me i'm still learning so bear with me so this little handle goes up and this top part opens up like this so you can see the little tines this right here is for when you put a spiral on later and then up here is where we're actually going to punch the holes but i was going to show you something on this side as well there's this little tray you can store them sorry it's hard to see when this is white okay so you can store these in here and everything's the same color so you can't see anything. But also something that's important is down here, if you can see these, whoop, these are for measuring what size 
of binding material you need. And there's these little slots right here. So you can stick the paper in there like this, uh, like so. And you can see what size that you need to use. And I only have, I have a half inch, which is right here. And then this is five eighths. I don't have five eighths. Mine are a little bit bigger. There's three quarters of an inch. So if you need to kind of have an idea right here, you can measure, but also when you buy the spirals, they also tell you how, about how many pages they'll hold. And so when you print something, you can go off that as well. So we're gonna bring this back up here. And we wanna make sure our paper is pushed all the way over to this little tab up here. Otherwise your hose will be all off. If you don't push every single paper all the way over there, it'll be really hard to line everything up at the end. So you're only supposed to put 15 sheets at a time. I don't do that because that just makes it even harder. But I'm gonna grab one of our clear sheets that's shining at you. And the clear sheets and the cardstock are a little bit harder to punch, and so make sure you don't have as many sheets. So you're gonna stick them in the slot back here, and then push it back, and then use your muscles. And we have holes. So let me show you again. So since that one had the front cover, I didn't take as many normal pieces of paper, but since this one does not. I put a little bit more. Oops, sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Okay, so we have holes again. So we're just gonna keep doing that until we get everything punched. And then I'll come back and show you how we can put the spirals on it. And I'm gonna be using the three quarter for all these because they're a little bit thicker. If I had something slightly smaller, I could probably use it, but Amazon usually, I haven't found any like the in-between unless you want to buy something special and I don't want to pay that. So, so this is what we're using. So I have all of these punched and I put the back on it as well. So now what we're going to do is we have our little spiral. I don't even know what these things are called, guys. If you do know, help me out. I'm sure I could just look it up. But so you're gonna put it, we're gonna put it on these little tines sticking out. And we're gonna pull this little lever over here. Pull the lever, crunk. And it's gonna open it up. So let me see. Well, let's not do that. You guys can't see anything. This one missed. How did it mess? That just makes me think of Mulan. If it makes anybody A, let's think of it. Okay, <laughs> so let me show you again, if I can get the camera. So this is closed, and then this is open. So we're opening it up. And it took me a second when I was playing with it to get the spiral on the right way. So it is a little bit tricky, so you might have to play with it until you get it the right way also. So then we're gonna just start putting this on. And these ones are a little bit bigger, so it's slightly harder because they move more. The smaller ones are a little bit stiffer, so they go on easier. So we're just gonna keep putting these on. Okay, so we have them all on. And occasionally, if you have a lot of papers and you're starting to run out of room, you know, cause these still have a lot of room on them, you might have to close them a little bit cause if this gets too full, the papers start coming off. So it helps to close it so that that curl kind of helps hold your papers on. So just if they get really full, I've found that that's helpful. So then we're going to, just release it. Jooped. So pull our lever, and then it doesn't want to come off because I'm making a video, so obviously why would it want to come off? Why do we even have that lever? 
There we go. And we have a book. All right, so here we go. Here's our number one. We finished one summer packet for one of my kids. I don't even know which one this is. I'll have to look through. <laughs> I don't remember. So it's really great resource. I've loved having the binder. It just makes it a lot easier if I just need to do something. I can just do it myself instead of piling stuff up and having my husband take a trip or me take a trip to do it. So, so far for me, I feel like it's been worth the money. And something else that I really loved about it is that I've been able to make books for my kids. This is the first book, but I'm sure we'll make more. But my son is currently just loving dragons. And so one day he just went crazy and started drawing tons of pictures. You can see some of these and labeling them like from how to train your dragon. Yes, that's what he loves. So there's tons of pictures in here. And so he made a cover for it. And then it was like, guess what? We can bind this. He was trying to staple it all together and we just, we don't have that powerful of a stapler. And so we bound it together. It was slightly difficult because the pages were a little bit mutilated from him using them, but we got it to work. And you know, with the black cover to help it have a little bit more strength. So it doesn't just have to be used for stuff that they're doing through the school year that you want them to work on or some of the workbooks I get, I get them unbound so I can just bind them because I prefer having a spiral to just a normal binding on a book. It's harder to flip through and I usually don't tear the pages out. We just flip to the next thing. So that's just a lot easier. I prefer flipping and just going like this than having a big spine on a book that just keeps flopping back on me. I don't really like that, obviously. So I've loved having it, and I've loved having it for this reason as well, is that we can make books for our kids and they can keep them. It can be just this fun extra thing that they can do for school or during their free time when they're done with their schoolwork. And so I would recommend using the Fellows Binder tool, however, you, whatever you call it. But if you're interested in more homeschooling ideas, resources, or just listening to me talk about goofy things that we do, <laughs> or just about me being goofy, then please subscribe to my channel down below and we will be excited to make some more videos for you. Have a good day.